I thought when I started my career that it was super important. I, I got Gray's Anatomy. My dad had that book. He was a doctor. So I was like looking through and said, if I just memorize all these muscles, I can put it all together and understand the human body. But then it doesn't really work that way. And the reason why it doesn't work that way is that if you know a muscle, a bicep muscle looks like this in resting and pose, and a tricep goes like this. Maybe the bicep. That's crispy, the arm. Sorry, I don't know. These muscles change shape when they uh, are flexed or turned, right? So, like, you look at this muscle, right? You see how it moves. So, it's more important to know the clusters of muscles, the shapes, the overall shape of it, and understand that that shape changes depending on the position of the body. Um, and so, to memorizing what a muscle looks like is kind of pointless because the muscle changes shape um, in different poses, extension, contraction, flexing, not flexing. Um, so what's more important is to understand the basic um, building blocks. And so the one that doesn't change shape a lot is uh, your chest because it's primarily bones, it can compress a little and expand a little bit. But for the most part, you have your shoulder slots, your chest, and the bottom of your rib cage right here, right? If this is your rib cage, okay, and that's your shoulder slot. And then looking through this, you can see the other shoulder slot because this is a three quarter angle. That's the torso. This is the middle line. So there's the pec muscle here, pec muscle there, ribs here. Okay. And so knowing what this shape is, is critical. And here's where the neck fits in. It's kind of... Okay. It's like chest armor. Now, when people are standing still, this chest... And then you have to be able to draw the pelvis. The pelvis has two slots underneath. If you're bipedal. Um, right? And that's the pelvis, okay? It mirrors pretty much the pelvis bone, um, but also if you break apart a GI Joe, these are the two pieces, and there's a ball that kind of sits in the middle, a rubber band that connects the two, which is interesting because that's an interesting way of looking at it. So the center of mass of the torso, the center of mass of that pelvis are the same. When they're aligned on top of each other, people are standing pretty much up and down, okay? They're not dynamic. They're in a position of rest. If you look at Jack Kirby's figures, this point and this point, A and B, let's say, point A and B are usually as far apart as possible without breaking the structure, the, the backbone of the figure itself. And what happens when you move that pelvis away uh, from the torso is that you now have bodies that are essentially off balance, right? And what that does, okay, is it creates momentum, it creates movement in your figure. And then all you do is connect the top to the bottom, and then you can put the rest of the, the appendages, and now you've got a character like the Flash that's, that's running, okay? or any kind of Wolverine type pose or Batman where he's kind of, um, you know, got one arm down, one arm back with a fist clenched like that. His chest is here. His pelvis is sometimes off center, right? That's the center of mass there, center of mass there. All right? So to create more energy and dynamic figure work, draw your chest, your torso, draw your pelvis, and make sure the center points are as far apart so they're not on top of each other as possible. Okay, So that's, that's step one. So when you think of a Jack Kirby character throwing a punch like this, the center torso is here. P 
pelvis torso is here, right? See how far apart they are? Okay. And now, once you have that knowledge, you go like, wow, that's cool. I can now have characters lunge forward and, and feel like even if they're standing still, just by moving these slightly apart, even though they're standing still, they can look a little more dynamic. And now what George Bridgman did was he said, to create twist and movement in figures, characters like Daredevil, well, think of like ballet people first, but characters like Batman and, and Daredevil, they're, they're moving through space. They're not moving straight up and down, but they are often twisting. He's twisting, right? So it's not just that he's punching straight, but he's twisting to get the maximum amount of torque and energy, right? It's one thing to throw this way, but then you get more if you follow through like that. So if you look at a golfer or baseball pitcher or whatever, when they throw a ball, okay? So what, what Bridgman taught us is that you can now take that torso the rib cage right that we should be practicing over and over right here's the side rib cage here's the three-quarter rib cage right here's the front rib cage Does that make sense? Should be able to draw that from any any direction. Here's the top of the, the rib cage. Here's the top of that rib cage at a slight angle. Right, this is all oh, sorry. If you draw that rib cage, it has it exists in this plane here. But then, if I take that pelvis, and turn it, now we can create. I've exaggerated the the, the distance between the two. I've now created torque. I've created a twisting motion in this figure. Does that make sense? And then we can kind of um, help sell this by dropping a shadow here. The rib cage under uh, the ribs actually underneath here. Okay. So the center line goes here, cuts in, comes down, and then turns. Actually, you can't see the turn because it's hidden by that leg. Okay. So instantly, um, I've created a turning and a motion in this character that did not exist before. And if you look at a lot of uh, Frank Miller's sketchbooks, um, 
not so, I don't know if so much for Daryl. He did layouts for, for Klaus Jansen to finishes. You see, uh, he'll, he'll go in and do the construction with like a black, black marker, I think. And then he'll do the outline in red, the figure work in red, the volumes. We can beef them up a little bit. Okay. I apologize for this bad tangent that's going off in the space that Okay. And here's here's another example of a of the same pose from a different angle. Okay. So this slot, and there's the rib cage, all right? But then look at this pelvis. It's at a different angle. All right? That f center line is is this line right here. This pelvis, though, is doing this. So that pelvis is in that plane. Okay. So not only are they apart from each other, but they're rotated in space. So <clears throat> if you do that consistently, all your figures now are not only moving forward because their their center of mass is slightly apart, but spatially they're contorted and torqued, and now they've got, not only are they moving in one direction, but they're twisting as they're moving. And that's how you get the most dynamic figure work. So when you have a character like Daredevil or Catwoman swinging, or Batman swinging through a city, if you can apply not only moving... The idea of moving that torso away from the pelvis, but then also rotating the two in space. You'll have um, poses that I think um, people will not, not even understand how it was constructed, but will feel more full of life and energy. Today was all about pelvis, torso, separating the two apart, and then twisting them in space. Okay, so if this is the pelvis, if this is the torso, and this is the pelvis, and they're normally on top of each other like this, move them apart, and then twist it, not just this way and this way, or this way and this way, but also this way and this way, right? And that's essentially what I've done here with this daredevil shot. I've got the pel pelvis, uh, sorry, the torso over the pelvis. I move them slightly apart. I twisted the chest slightly this way, and I twisted the pelvis this way and down this way. And that's how I was able to kind of create this almost uh, Z-like effect within the body itself. And that's the kind of movement um, that ballet dancers have, athletes, superheroes. And that's what I got out of looking at the pictures from George Bridgman.